turn forward now to page 332. 332. Yes, channels only. In the first, the second, and the last. say it's kind of complicated leading songs it really is brother Nick is doing a good job by the way amen um, very tasteful but where he needed God has blessed him with an opportunity to lead so he does does that and he loves to serve God amen so again if you have a bulletin this evening just to go over a couple of things not too much just as reminders of course Pastor Liddell is with us tonight amen so he's getting an opportunity to bring another sermon on his heart. Um, just a reminder for us that the 14th is Flag Day. We honor Old Glory. Amen. As you see, he's, there's quite a few on the wall as our pastor uh, displayed uh, Old Glory on the wall. Why? Of course, he's a veteran. He's a proud American. Um, so is many of us. And so uh, we honor that. Amen. 21st, of course, is uh, Father's Day. And if you're a father, you should be saying amen. Because let me tell you, it is very, very, not only a hard job, but a very, a very pleasant job to be a father um, when you have kids. Some people don't think that way, but let me tell you something. I was noticing something of an actor, a well-known actor, I won't give his name, but I was playing it this afternoon, and you know what he says? He's not even Christian, I don't think. He said, the problem starts from home. That's why. Don't blame the system. It starts from home. That's an actor who doesn't even go to church in America. It starts from home. Don't blame the system. It starts from home. We need to raise our kids. The great responsibility of a dad is tremendous. The honor of being dad is grateful. I thank God that I'm able to have, we were to have children, me and my wife, and raise them. So Father's Day, you have a father, tell them, I, tell them you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. And come to church that Sunday and honor the Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Honor the Father in heaven. Down below is a saying for the week from Pastor Adrian Rogers, who's passed and gone home with the Lord. Amen. Done a great, tremendous work here while he was on this side of heaven. Now he's with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And it's saying, it says, the same Jesus who turned water into wine can transform your home, your life, your family, and your future. He is still in the miracle working business. And his business is the business of transformation. It's true. You have to let the Lord lead you, though, to do it. Yep. If you're willing. If you're willing. That's, that's the announcements for today. I know pastor's traveling. 
I haven't done this in quite some time. I know we usually do testimony time in the sense how God has been good to you. Amen. Yep. And we're going to do it again tonight. Amen. Amen. So for real quick, is, has anything has happened to you this week, seriously, or within the last couple of weeks, where for you think God would bless you some way, somehow? Amen? Amen. Or answer to prayer even. It doesn't really matter. Anyone? Anyone all? Brother Harris? Amen. 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 Anybody else? Brother Nick? Yeah, I'd like to praise God. Um, as human beings, as Christians, we always go through you know, trials and different testing. And, uh, I just thank God that every single time, though, know, through that trial and testing, God is always there. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's not easy sometimes, you know, because, you know, you're still in the flesh, still a human being. Right. But I praise God that he's always there. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? We'd like to praise God or give him thanks for anything. I'll say it. I thank the Lord for my salvation, honestly. Amen. I see what's going on in this world. Yeah. Uh, Brother Calvin and I, he, when we left this afternoon, we had a long talk. And uh, you know what he told me? What a great testimony he had, by the way. See, he told me if he didn't get saved, he'd know for sure he'd be one of those individuals sitting there causing a ruckus. Yeah. Amen. Not, po not protesting peacefully, causing a ruckus. And he said he's glad he got saved Amen. because the light bulb came on. Yep. Yep. It's funny. I've talked to another brother in Christ who is no longer here. He's living in North Carolina. He told me the same thing many years ago. We come from the same type of neck of the woods, like from a bad neighborhood. Told me the same thing. Thank God I got saved because the light came on. Amen. People can tell you you're brainwashed if you want to. I'm glad I got saved. Amen. I thank the Lord for that. I thank for the Bible. I thank, thank, for, uh, thank God for the old guard who preached on hell and sin repeatedly because they cared. And when I was a young man, married and not living right, and I heard that from my old preacher, Ronald T. Petrick, let me tell you something. It takes a lot of drive, a lot of absorbance to say, yeah, it's my fault. It takes a lot of conviction to do that. And it takes a lot of humbleness, humbleness to come to an altar like this and ask God to guide you Amen. tremendously. Yeah. It takes a lot. I funny, I asked my wife the other day, not to take too long. I said, honey, do you, do you like me more now than you did like me before when we first got married? She goes, I love you more now than ever than Amen. before. Amen. See, God's real. Yep. But you got to let them lead your life. Amen. We're not perfect. We're going to mess up. You got to pick yourself up. Ask God for forgiveness yep. and ask for guidance yep. and push forward. Amen. You got to push forward. Yep. Um, I don't look towards people as successes. I look towards what God has used, how they use people to be success. Yep. That's how I look at that. Because otherwise we'll be disappointed. I look towards the Lord. And that's what I do. Anybody else? Anybody? Nobody? All right. Okay. Well, you know, God gave us a beautiful day. I'm sure some people went out to have a good lunch. I'm sure you appreciate that. Appreciate a country, able to sit there and uh, enjoy a freedom in this country. Amen. Uh, I do. I appreciate it very much. And if Pastor Miller's, wa Mick Miller's watching, brother, we, we're hoping that you come back safely. Amen. You and your wife. We're praying for you guys. We hope you enjoyed your time and had to do what you had to do. But, uh, we kind of miss you, you know. And yes, these lights are very hot. <laughs> so we pray for your safety, preacher. And so without a said, uh, anything said, men, would you make your way up for these offerings, please? Got a tongue twister there. Apologize. And if you make your way. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed today's sermon. I enjoyed uh, this evening, this morning's school, uh, Sunday school lesson. Very encouraging, very powerful. It tells a lot that we need to get going. We need to get going for the Lord. Brother Jerry, could you pray this evening?
All right. Let's pray. Father, uh, once again, Lord, uh, a lot's been said, and uh, there's more that can be said, Lord. And, and, and I, too, praise you, Father, for your goodness, for your mercy and love, for your comfort in times of, uh, of distress, Father. And we love you, Father. We also thank uh, uh, Pastor Liddell for spending his, uh, his, this, this Sunday with us, Lord, uh, all day, his teaching and preaching and his friendship and, and, and his love and kindness to us, Lord, and, and we're grateful for that, Lord, and, and he's always welcome here, Lord. Uh, he's one of us, his family, Lord, and we thank you for that too, Lord. And Father, this evening, uh, I also thank you, Lord, for the gifts that will be collected, Lord. We thank you because all needs have always been met, Lord. There's no doubt about it. There's, there's, Lord, you're always there, Lord, and you always back us up. And thank you, Father, for all that that you do for us. Bless whatever, uh, 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 Lord, uh, you, you put in in, in, in Brother Liddell's heart uh, this evening to give us, Lord. And I, and I ask, Father, that our hearts and ears be open for that message, Lord. And we also thank you, Lord, again for the people and uh, bless them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Going to the rock, to the rock, oh yes, of my salvation. Gonna go to the rock. I'm going to the rock, to the rock, oh yes, of my salvation. Gonna go to the rock. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where can I turn? Oh, where can I turn? When there's no one else I can turn to, who am I gonna talk to? Tell me who. When nobody wants to listen, who am I gonna lead on? When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock, I know that's able. I'm going to the rock. I'm gonna go to the rock of my salvation. I'm going to the stone that the builders rejected. Run into the mountains, and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Oh yes, where can I hide? Till the storms have all passed over, where am I going to run to? When the winds of sorrow threaten, is there a refuge? In those times of tribulation, when my soul needs consolation, I go to the rock, go to the rock. Gonna go to the rock of my salvation. I'm going to the stone that the builders rejected. Run into the mountains and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. I stand and I shelter. When I need a friend, I go to the rock. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Go to the rock.
Wow. Jesus changed everything. Amen? You know, if you're born again, you should know that, right? Amen. Amen. All right, turn to page 164. 164. When you found your place, can you all stand? A great old song by Fanny Crosby. Praise him, praise him. Amen. It's that time of the service already, amen? Wow, time is going by, and it's going quick. All you may be seated, by the way. I'm so sorry. We get an opportunity to hear uh, Pastor Dell again this evening. I was just telling Brother Nick, as that video went out, that's Pastor Alouette from Detroit. I don't know if you remember the name of his church, but I got an opportunity to see him preach one time at Pastor Dingman's. And, you know, for me, it was a great opportunity to see a lot of preachers preach. And I remember him and many others, so it's very dear. So I just want to say, when you get preachers up here that are invited to come preach from this pulpit, they don't take it for granted. They just want to be a great help to you people. So I tell you this, as when I see guest speakers, whether it's in this church or another, I take what God has put on their heart seriously, as do as I as I do our preachers. So therefore, Brother Liddell, would you come back up and preach to us again?
God bless you. It's so good to be back here tonight. Uh, I've had a really good time looking the city over and all out on the lake front. <clears throat> of course, I found a lot of those things because I was lost. <laughs> those GPSs, I still prefer maps. I see where I'm going. <laughs> all right. You wonder, are they really taking me to the right place? And I, I sit up and I argue with that thing all the time. But I've really enjoyed being here. The songs have been excellent, especially this morning. Those are two of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. melody in my heart. <clears throat> but God is good, good, good. And I'm so glad that I'm saved. Amen. On my way to heaven, and I'm not ashamed of him either. And I tell people everywhere I go that He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. <clears throat> Nobody loves me like you. Now tonight, I don't know about you, but sometimes you get depressed. Now, they said Christians are not supposed to get depressed. We're not, but we do, because we're human. You go to the doctor, and he gives you a report, and, you know, brings tears to your eyes. My wife was diagnosed with cancer. So you're going to have something in your life that's going to drain you of your strength, because that's what depression does. It takes you. It drains you. It's just like when I saw this, a shattered city, Chicago. Go city by the lake. You know, that drains you. Depresses you. And then look at this one. Deadless Memorial Day weekend in the city since 2015. A lot of people have been locked up because they want to get out and let off some steam. But to the people that live in a place like this, it's depressing. It drains you. <clears throat> Saw a little boy in a classroom. Teacher just let him out. It was a math class. And she was the boringest teacher in the whole school. And when she opened that door and she said, the bell rang, class was dismissed, that little guy hollered like, oh! He just ran out the hall screaming. <laughs> I said, my goodness. But you know, you have to do something when, when you're depressed, when you're down. And so tonight I want to kind of preach about that because I know they're hurting people in this church. They're hurting people in my church. All of us have a burden. And I'm so glad to see a lot of you back here tonight because <clears throat> I think it was um, Lee Robinson used to say, it takes one to survive, it takes three to thrive. You ever seen a survivor, somebody out of a plane crash or a survivor off of um, a train wreck? They all messed up. People that come to church just Sunday morning, that's not enough. They all messed up. You need Sunday night too. You need to give God the whole day. And then you need to come back on Wednesday for some teaching. Amen? And now, I know your pastor's been saying that you probably need to hear from somebody else. You know, we get the big head and think, well, I'm doing all right. God's blessing me. Check this out. If I gave you $100 for coming this morning, how many would like that? Amen. <laughs> Raise your hand. I know I would. Okay, you got a hundred this evening. How'd you like that? Love that, wouldn't you? And then you come back on Wednesday, you get another hundred. How much you got? But the guy that just came Sunday morning, how much he had? Just a hundred. You're two hundred dollars ahead. Now it's the same thing with Jesus. Amen. You learn about him Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You know the kind of church that you're in is rare. Because most people don't want to do what we have to do. And that is actually live for the Lord. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, go soul winning the whole nine yards. A lot of these churches should stay closed because all they do is come on Sunday morning and that's it. Bim, bam, thank you, Jesus. I'm through. That's not giving your life to God. Amen. So I thank God for this kind of church. <clears throat> Amen. I'm falling apart. There goes the mic. Okay. I'd like for you to open your Bibles to 2 Samuel. I want to thank your pastor and his wife for this opportunity. Amen. To come and to speak to you. <clears throat> and to be blessed by you also. Especially all of you that are here tonight. In 1 Samuel, that's actually 1 Samuel, <clears throat> we're in 1 Samuel, chapter number 30, 
verses 1 through 6, and let us stand for the reading of God's word. I'll read the first one. Let's learn to show respect. We ain't going to give the knee when we read the word like they want to do in the NFL. Amen. <laughs> we'll read it responsibly. I'll read the first in um, 1 Samuel 30, verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. So David and his men <clears throat> came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinanon, uh, the Jezreelites, and uh, Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the, Cam the Camelitess. All stressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the souls of all the people were grieved, and every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Father, I just pray right now that. The words that I speak tonight <clears throat> would be what you would have me to say. And Lord, I pray that they'll do a work in the hearts of those that hear. My prayer is, oh, Father, bless this church. Let it remain a beacon of hope and light on this corner. And Lord, bless these that are here tonight with a special blessing. For they came back to get more. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> I don't know where you get your strength from. I know... There was a sailor by the name of Popeye. Some of y'all remember him? He was married to olive oil. You know, the girl with the skinny legs. And uh, he always had to have what? No, church. I mean, I mean spinach, right. No, no, he had to have spinach. Anytime something happened to Popeye, I mean to olive oil, uh, he, would, he would open his can of spinach and he would take it. And that's where his strength came from. Now I want to give you a few verses here on <clears throat> um, strength. Because discouragement drains you of your strength. David had to encourage himself. In other words, what he said, I have to get my strength back. He was so depressed, so down, so out that he says, I got to get up again. So how did he do it? He didn't have spinach. He said he encouraged himself in the Lord. I want you to go with me to a few verses and starting in Exodus, the 15th chapter. Exodus 15, verse number 2. <clears throat> this is Moses. Moses said, the Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Habitation means I'm going to fix a place in my life, in my heart, that God is going to live. He's going to, he's going to inhabit me. He's going to live within me because that's where my strength comes from. <clears throat> I love this verse because it says the Lord is my strength and song. Now, a lot of people are not aware of this. Music has three parts. You got the melody. That's God. You got the harmony. That's Jesus. You have the beat or the rhythm. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves everything. So he's saying that my strength comes in my song, and in my song is about God. That's why I hate rap music. Yeah. It's nothing but beat, beat, ba boop, ba boop, ba boop, ba boop, ba boop, ba boop. Nothing about God. Nothing about anything, amen? To be able to do it, all you have to do is be an idiot and, cuss and be able to use profanity. <clears throat> I like godly music. Music that moves me. Music that edifies me. And I'm going to tell you the difference between edification and entertainment. Because a lot of churches are entertainment centers. They're not edifying people. And 25. Go to, Exodus, uh, go to <clears throat> Exodus 25 verse 22 I think it is. That's, nope. That's 2 Samuel 22, 33. 2 Samuel. Uh, 
Second Samuel. Twenty two, verse thirty three. Got it? Yeah. I don't. Twenty two, thirty three. Here we go. All right. God is my what? And power. He maketh my way perfect. You don't have to make a way. God will make a way. You say, I can't fix it. I know you can. I can't either. But God can. You got a problem in your life? You're going to have to get God involved in that problem. He will be your strength. He'll be your way maker. I want you to skip down another verse with me. Um, Let's do this last one. Psalms 84 verse 5. Psalms 84, verse 5. Blessed is the man, get this now, whose strength is where? In whose heart are the ways of them. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. My strength is not in me. The older you get, the less strength that you have. Amen? So I've learned I have to depend on God. I heard a preacher one time say, before I sit down to eat, I make sure I get everything I'm going to eat and drink. Because I don't want to have to get back up. Amen. <laughs> David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now let me show you the difference between entertainment and edification. The church is supposed to edify you. And there's a big difference. See, entertainment makes you feel good. Edification don't make you feel good all the time. Turn to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse number 11. Ephesians 4, 11. In Ephesians 4.11, the Bible reads, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And here's why he put pastors and teachers and evangelists in the church. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, to build your soul up. And sometimes it tears the flesh down. Edifying means that my spirit is built up in God. And there's a, there's a big difference between having a, a strong spirit, amen, and, and, and having uh, 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 emotions, emotionalism. You see, edification builds up your soul. David was drained. He did not know what to do or which way to go. His family is taken off. All his men, they lost their families. They've lost everything. And guess who they're blaming? They're blaming the leader. They're blaming the leader. They're blaming David. You, you, you caused this. And David said they were at the point of wanting to stone him. Hey, wait a minute. Nobody's going around saying, hey, that's the way to go, big guy. Uh-uh. They were, they were not encouraging him. They were saying, you should have uh, uh, handled this situation a whole lot better than what you did. And so he didn't have nobody to encourage him. There was no Facebook out. Amen. He didn't have nobody to say, uh, way to go. Sometimes you are going to have to find a way to encourage yourself, to get your strength back. You know, Moses was in, experienced the same thing. Turn to Exodus 1 and 4, Exodus chapter 17, 1. Exodus 17, 1. There it says, and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin and the journey according to the commandments of the Lord and pitched in Raphidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore, the people did chide with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. And the the chiding means they're accusing Moses. And Moses said unto them, why chide me, ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirst there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us out of Egypt to kill us? 
Wow. And our children and our cattle with thirst. And Moses did what? He cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do unto, the, unto this people? They be almost ready. Hello? To stone me. That's not encouraging. That's discouraging. That's strength draining to be blamed. So tonight, I'd like to leave, as the old preacher say, a thought with you. And that thought is this. Stay encouraged. When others do not encourage you, you're going to have to find a way to encourage yourself. <clears throat> How many of y'all saw the last dance? You didn't have nothing else to see. <laughs> no sports. God shut down all the sports. How Anybody in here watch The Last Dance? Michael Jordan? Nobody watched it? Oh, this is a real spiritual church. Because my sermon is coming out of The Last Dance. Uh huh. Michael Jordan was great because of one thing. And you know, this thing can make you great too. You can take the principles of the Bible without God and become great. I'm serious. God's principles will work with anybody. But it's better if you do know God. Here's what he took. He had to keep himself motivated. You don't become the greatest anything by not being motivated. Every time you're doing something, whatever it is, you ought to do it to the best of your ability. And you're not always going to feel like this is a great day. Some of you, I hope somebody here at one time in their life played basketball. Some days you can put that ball up there and everything goes in. The basket looks like it's this wide. And then the next time you come, everything you put up there is a rock. It bounces off the rim, bounces over here, bounces there. Nothing goes in. Right. What do you do in, t- in times like that when nothing is working for you? Right. Everything you try is a failure. You know what you do? Keep on shooting. Hey. Huh? Yep. You have to find a way to keep on encouraging yourself. That's what Michael Jordan did. Yep. And that's the same thing. That you're going to have to do. Because every day. Is not going to be. A day. Where you're on top of the mountain. You know. As a. <clears throat> the slaves. During slavery time. Wrote over 6,000 hymns. And one of the most famous ones to me. Is nobody knows. The trouble I've seen. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I'm almost level. To the ground. But they found a way to keep on getting up. And this is what David had to do. This is what Michael Jordan did. Here's one of the first things that he did. He found encouragement in places. You know, a place can be an encouragement. I told y'all, when I come to this church, I get encouraged. Amen. And when I go to my church, I get encouraged. And when you come to your church, you ought to get encouraged because when you come through those doors, you're coming in here with some problems. Amen. huh? Some, something didn't go right in your life. I don't know if it's your love life, your financial life, whatever kind of life it is, something is wrong in your life. It's not all well with you all the time. But you ought to find a way to be encouraged. Amen. Jordan said this. He said that um, he loved to play. Since y'all didn't see it, I have to tell you. I asked my church where. They were able to tell me just like that. I said, what place encouraged him to play the most? He said, Madison Square Gardens. He said, I love playing in that place. I have a witness up there. Get that man a hand for saying amen. Right. You got one amen here. He said he loved playing in Madison Square Garden because it was so large. The crowd is huge and the noise is deafening. Amen. That pumped him up. That made him feel good. Don't you know God wants you pumped up? He wants you feeling good. Oh, time after time, when, when, when the disciples were down, he would tell them, be a good cheer. Amen. Remember when he was out on the boat and came walking on the water? And, and, and they look out and they see this apparition coming walking at midnight. And now they become fearful. And he says what? Be, of, be not afraid. Be of good cheer. Amen. We're supposed to be happy, folks. Yes, sir. Now, can you be happy all the time? Uh-uh. You're going to get drained. But you shouldn't stay down there, man. 
I think in Psalms it says the righteous is knocked down seven times, but he's constantly what? Getting back up. Getting back up. Life is going to knock you down. We got over COVID-19. Now we got, uh, I almost said Rodney King. <laughs> we got, uh, we got uh, uh, what's his name? We, we got Floyd, and I'm telling you, on next week or tomorrow, you're going to have something else that wants to drain you, discourage you, yeah. knock you down, amen? And what a better place to come to get on your feet than the house of God. The Psalms in 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, amen, let us go into the house of God. You ought to find a place of encouragement. <coughs> <clears throat> There's a song I like. It's called Little Brown Church. Anybody familiar with that song? The Little Brown Church in the in the in, in the Dale is not a very popular song. Old old song. <clears throat> he said it was the joy of his childhood. I can remember back when I was a child down in the state of Mississippi. We'd go down there every summer. We would go to church on one Sunday, the third Sunday. That's when the preacher came back. And that place to me is still in my memory. It was encouraging. It was an encouraging place. First of all, <clears throat> we got to dress up. Didn't have shoes, but we had long pants. <laughs> I'm serious. I got to wear my long pants to church. We put on what is called our Sunday best. And you know what? We got a bath. Now, of course, there's a lot of us, and, and, and we had those different tubs, they, they, and you had to the youngest kid, that was me, always got in last after the older children had gotten in and got their bath. But I did get a bath. And we went to church once a month. I can still remember that to this day. That was one of the happiest days of my life. There ought to be a place of encouragement. You know what a lot of people do today? When they're down and they're depressed, they stay home. And many times it's the house that's depressing you, amen? Sometimes our house can be more depressing than anything else. As I stay there, does this need to be done? And, and, and trust me, if you've got a wife, she's going to point out everything that needs to be done. And want to know why you're not doing any things that need to be done. When you're depressed, you don't do anything but be depressed. Amen? I'm trying to find a way to get back up. You have to find a place. Jesus would often sneak off to a solitary place. I got a place at my house. But very few come. I don't even let my dog out there. Of course, he's dead now. <clears throat> That's my garage. That's my garage. I, get, I go out in the garage, and I know my wife's not going to, it's not that important. She's not going to come out there. But I'm sitting in there in the house someplace, she's going to find me. Amen? She seldom want to come to the garage. Find yourself a place where you can go and get alone with God that you can be encouraged because the world, your health will Pull you down. It'll drain you down. You need a special place. <coughs> My wife was going to divorce me the day I got saved. She brought me divorce papers. Her family told her to divorce me. She gave me the papers. I took them. I did them like that. Told her she couldn't do that. But you know what? That next Sunday morning, I decided I better go to church. Amen. I went down to the house of God. Amen. Now, listen to this. Her family, her friends, everybody told her, get rid of him. He ain't worth it. I ain't going to tell you the words they used about me. And most of them were true. Amen. She said, get rid of him. The preacher at the house of God was the only one that didn't talk to me. He pleaded with her. Not to divorce me. That was encouraging. So I told her this. I said, I'm through talking to you. I said, I want you to watch me. Amen? Amen. I've been lying to you for 11 years. I know that. I've been doing wrong for 11 years. I said, so now talk is out. I got encouraged by my preacher in the house of God. And I started walking with Jesus. And I've never looked back. And my wife tells that to this day. She's glad she did. Amen. Yes. And then when I told her I, I was called to preach about a year later, she said, you ain't even a Christian. It's going to take some time. About two years later, she comes to me and she tells me this. 
She said, I will follow you. You can be my pastor. Why? Because I'm walking with Jesus. Amen. I'm being encouraged. Everybody, even my friends, wanted her to divorce me. I did some things I shouldn't have done. I almost killed my wife, beat her up. And I'm not blaming it on drugs and alcohol. I'm blaming it on sin. Amen. I had sin in my life. And her face was all beat up and everything. And when I saw her, I wanted to kill me. God can forgive. Amen. If you trust him. And if you continuously go to him, especially when you are down and you're depressed. I know preachers right now. I know two or three of them that have killed themselves. Preachers even get depressed. So don't tell me you're not going to be down. But don't stay there and play some blues record, amen, or talk to another weak person. You've got to find a place where you can get alone with God Almighty and talk to him. Sometimes you can't even find your past. But you've got to find a way to stay encouraged. That's what Michael did. Let me show you something else that he did. <clears throat> he let people motivate him. Now, people can depress you. And people can motivate you. See, I got some people that motivate me. You said who? Isaiah? Jeremiah? Daniel? Obadiah? Jonah? Micah? Habakkuk? Yeah, yeah, they they motivate me. I love what Amos said. How can two walk together? Unless they what? Unless they agree. And sometimes you got to get rid of some people, amen, and be encouraged by the right people. <clears throat> Jordan, in that last dance, he said that he was, he didn't say it, but we know it because of what he did. I think it was, uh, what's his name, Carl, one of those coaches, didn't respect him. He walked, what's his name, George Carl, right, did, did, didn't speak to him. He took that as motivation. The nerve of him not to speak to me. I was showing something. You got to find a way to stay up. You got to get encouraged. So he found a person, amen, and it was negative motivation, but it worked. Now, we do just the opposite. I find Jesus, and I see what he did on the cross, amen, because he loved me. That motivates me to serve him and to take stuff off of people. Amen, yes. People talk about me all the time. Come on. Look, I couldn't get on Facebook because if I read some of that stuff, you're talking about being down and depressed. I, I couldn't handle it in, in this new this new age that you all, you young folks are living in, huh? <clears throat> Where you can tell people in a minute how you feel about them. I couldn't take it. And that's a lot of y'all can't, a lot of you all can't take it either. And that's why they're so depressed. And that's why we have so many teenage suicides. Is because you're letting people discourage you, drain you, get all of your strength. And when you're empty, Satan comes in and fills the void. And he, he, wait a minute, he can't pull the trigger, but he can show, suggest that you do it. Right, right. Use the right people in the right way to encourage you. I've said two things tonight. Place. And people. You can use people to encourage you. My mother one time told me. She said son. And mom was like in her 80s then. <clears throat> I just got saved. And I started preaching. And it sticks to me to this day. My mother said son. You're one of the best preachers I ever heard. And I used to have to bribe my mother to come back to night service. I said mom if you come to night service. I'm going to take you to dinner. she would come every time I bought dinner. <laughs> and then. See, when she told me, you're, you're one of the greatest preachers I ever heard, I realized mom was asleep most of the time the other preachers was preaching. That's why she thought I was a good preacher. Amen. <laughs> but listen, she was an encouragement to me. I hear some of these mothers, the way they talk to their children, hello. Yep. Some of these dads too. Yep. You're not going to be anything. And I don't know why they do this. They always blame it on the other parent. Right. You're just like your no good daddy. Or you're just like your mother. Uh-uh. We want them to be like Jesus. Amen. And we need to encourage our children. Amen. You know children get depressed. One of the, <clears throat> They tell me that suicide among teenagers is up. Amen. And that's because they don't get this book, this book here. This book will teach you how to be motivated, how to be encouraged. Amen. <clears throat> People can say things to you. 
that would encourage you. Another thing that Michael used to encourage himself, to stay encouraged in the Lord, same thing you can do. Players. I can't remember the one player. My mind ain't what it used to be, but he said this player told him he had a good game. Y'all remember that? He had a good game. Michael missed every shot he put up there. He got mad at that. The next game he came back, dropped about 50 points on mine. <laughs> yeah. You can use people, players. In other words, members in the church ought to encourage you. Amen. Folks, you got to stay up. Amen. Nothing worse than an empty woman, an empty man, yes. a shell yes. that's not filled with the spirit of God. Amen. Satan wants to drain you, right. crush you. But you need to find some way, somehow. Yeah. I got to get back up. David says, listen, I got to go back and, 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 and undo what I've done. I know I messed up. I should have left a rear guard and I didn't. Right. And that's another thing. Quit looking back amen. about what you did yesterday. Amen. Past is back there, amen? Right. Present is here and future is there. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to live for the present and for the future, so you can't do nothing about that. Right. He went to God and God says, go after him. Right. You ever do that? Amen. You're going to have to learn how to do that, how to encourage yourself amen. in the Lord. Amen. I said he used players. Y'all ever see players, they walk around hitting each other. I ain't going to say what they hit each other, but they hit each other, man. Sometimes they hit them on the back, but usually times guys do that, you know. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but somehow it, it what? It encourages them. Now, when I taught, I had a paddle. I got it out of my truck now. It's a two by four, and it says, uh, <clears throat> uh, apply to the seat of knowledge, board of education. <laughs> You have, to find, you have to find a way to motivate people, amen, to do right. And so when I would bring it out, I would give them a choice, three licks or three, or, or, or three chapters. And most of the time when they saw, I called him Big Boy, they would take the chapters. But those that took it, I got the names on it, they would sign. They would sign. And I still have kids coming to me today, some of them 30, 40 years old, said, Mr. Liddell, <clears throat> I am so glad that you motivated me. Now, they won't let you do that today, Amen. And that was one of the reasons I retired. Because now the kids are hitting the teachers. <clears throat> Get motivated. Amen. When people come to church, say nice things to them. Amen. It motivates them. <clears throat> I had one little boy told me one time, he said, he said, I really like the way you preach. He said, I can understand everything that you say. I had another guy down at Pacific Garden Mission. He says, you preach like Moses going mad. That encouraged me. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I want to be up. I don't want to have a dead sermon. Amen. Now, sometimes they die. But I'm going to try to do better the next time. <clears throat> Here's another thing Michael did. Some of y'all know that. He practiced, didn't he? How did he practice? He practiced, 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 and used every game, <clears throat> every practice as though it was a game. You ought to do the same thing as a Christian. You know, you have to practice your faith. You got to practice liking people you don't like. Hello? Yeah. Bible says all the time we got to put on until it becomes natural. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That you can shake hands, you can smile with folks that you don't even like. Right. Right. We have people today, they're not practicing Christianity. <clears throat> right. I was out working on my car the other day, washing it, trying to pull the sun go down, and my neighbor came out, and I tell my wife, every time that woman come out, I try to hide. But she always has something for me to do. Amen. So she came out and she said, uh, uh, I need to get my ladders down and they're on a chain and, and uh, I can't cut them. She said, I can't, I can't get them down. I don't have a key. Is there anything you can do? I'm trying to get my truck washed so I can come up here in a clean truck so you all would be impressed. <laughs> Amen. And she wants me to stop what I'm doing and cut her chain down. So what did I do? I put on. Yes, ma'am. I'll be over. Be happy to do it. Lying. But I'm practicing. Doing what Jesus would do. I stopped what I was doing. Went down and got my, what you call it thing? Saw zone. Got that big old saw. Went over there and cut the thing off for it. Took about 20 minutes, amen. And by then it was dark outside and the mosquitoes were biting. But I practiced being a Christian. A Christian stops to help others. 
See, this is the problem we have today. We have a lot of people talking it, listening about it, but we're not practicing it. You get two people that don't like each other. Make sure they go soul winning together. They'll come back hugging and <clears throat> I'm serious. <clears throat> you ought to always be practicing being a Christian. Amen. Paul put it like this. I'm pressing toward a mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. He said he hadn't apprehended, but he's trying to. Amen. We ought to be trying to be like Christ. That will keep you motivated. And last of all, <clears throat> as I conclude, I said you can take people, places. This is one place that motivates me. You're good people. You motivate me. Amen. I love coming here. That's why I try never to turn Pastor McMillan down if he wants me to come here. You motivate me. I have a friend. He's another pastor. His wife <coughs> destroyed him and his ministry. But this man helped me. I'd ask him two months before his wife was involved in whatever she was involved in to come and preach for me. And when the thing hit the newspaper and everything and they threw him out to church and, and um, I still told him, I, I still want you to come preach. One of the reasons is I know how he was hurt. His wife was having an affair with some teenagers, boys. But this man helped me when I was down. You see, my son was at Howes Anderson College and he got kicked out. Okay, not college, he was at the grammar school, grade school. So I took him over to this other school. And this pastor <clears throat> was kind of worried, you know, when you get kicked out, your record probably, about accepting him in. And he asked somebody about me and my wife and my son. And the man that he asked almost cried. He said, they're good people. And so he let me, he let my son come in. No other school wanted to take him. But I wanted him to be in Christian school. So I got him in. I will never forget that day. I was down. I was hurt. And somebody helped me. So when he's down and he's hurt, when I called him up, I said, are you still coming? He said, do you want me to? I said, yeah, I want you to. I'm going to tell you the sermon that he preached. Never will forget it. And it was called, Make Your Bed. What was the sermon he preached? He said, sometimes you can be so down, so depressed. But if you make your bed up in the morning, at least you got one thing done. So you can be so down, you can't get anything done. You cannot concentrate. You cannot focus. Sermon was, Make Your Bed. I called him about a month ago. I said, preach, I made my bed. <laughs> what were you doing? I'm trying to encourage him. He's going through a tough time. He's lost his ministry. He's lost his school. He's lost his job. He's lost everything. We need to learn to encourage those who are down. Because one day we will find ourselves in a similar or even a worse situation. And you're going to need someone to get you encouraged. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there anyone today that would like to come to the altar for special prayer? Why don't you come at this time? <clears throat> Maybe you're depressed about something. Maybe you have a problem that you just can't solve. God is able. God is able. He said he cares for you. Cast your burdens upon him. A good time to come to God is when you can't figure it out. When you've given up on it. You've given up on that teenager. You've given up on that husband. Or even on yourself. Why don't you come to this altar and have a little talk with him? He still listens, he still hears, and he's still able. Is there anyone here today that is not saved? You have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you'd like to get saved? Is there anyone like that? Slip your hand up, we'll show you how to be saved. If not, we'll just pray. Take a few moments and pray to God. Put that problem before him. <clears throat>
Lord, we come before thy throne as empty pitchers before a full fountain, <clears throat> asking that you fill us with your strength, with your Holy Spirit. Renew our walk with you, O God. As the songwriter said, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if thou please. This is what we desire today. Oh, we got health issues. <clears throat> we got financial problems. Somebody may have a job problem. But whatever the problem is, we got a problem solving God. God is bigger than any problem we'll ever have or imagine or think that we have. Oh, come down and help us tonight. Speak to each heart, each man, each woman, each boy, each girl. As you only can do, oh God. And we'll give your name the praise and the glory and the thanks. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. As the long ranges have said, we're finished here. <laughs> Time way seems just too hard to follow. Believers giving up on every hand. What God needs is someone who is willing to stay beside the cross and firmly stand. I will stand up, stand up for the right. I will stand. Though it may cost my life, I will fight for my right to praise the Lamb. Though the world may be against me, I will stand. Christians, it is time we stand and show them that people still believe the old time way. So take your stand upon the rock of ages. Let's all determine now to boldly say, I will stand up, stand up for the right. I will stand, though it may cost my life. I will fight for my right to praise the Lamb. Though the world may be against me, I will stand. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. I will fight for my right to praise the Lamb. Though the world may be against me, I will stand. Though the world may be against me, I will stand. Though the world may be against me, I will stand.